cash game guys, a lot of times will put in 10, 15, 20 hour sessions. And it doesn't mean that you're not fatigued at these times. You just deal with fatigue a little bit better in those spots. You, you know, you know how, you know that you are fatigued. So you take a little bit longer to think. And uh, I think the, those long hours actually really help the cash game players. I heard a story, I think it was two opens ago that uh, Dan Watt had played like a 40 something hour cash game session or something like that and skipped one of the major tournaments because he was just playing the whole time. It was a good game or something like that. Wow. Good games will do that to players sometimes. So Dan Buzzgon chose not to shove in 10 blinds with 6-3 suited on the button, which I'm sure Pretty is wise fine. decision. Yeah. Uh, Leo does open here on small blind. He's three axes in from the small blind with a six Michael offsuit. Cole, Leo takes it down. I think I would have preferred to just shove there. You yeah. know, Michael only has like 12 bigs. Yeah, I agree. There's so much the money in there. the only player at this table that's really kind of made Leo bigger pre-flop raises than minimum or slightly more. He's, he's the only one who's really two and a half or three X did ever. I mean, I don't want to put in 1.5 million and have Michael shove 6 million with a hand like King Jack or something like that. And then I fold or have to call. Well, with you definitely suited. have to call. Yeah. Well, I mean, that doesn't se feel good either. Then no, Michael has, doesn't. you know, pocket twos or ace sure. seven or something. You're like going to have 50% anyway, or, or around there a lot of the time. And you'd rather just win the pot. Yeah, I mean, if, if you, sh I don't want to raise it if Michael shove like Jack Nine suited. Right. Where if if I just shoved, he's not calling with that hand. He has a lot of equity with that hand. I don't want to lose my chips. I just want to win the. Yeah, you're letting you know, him nine hundred k. You're out letting there. him not make a mistake when you. I think Leo's made some aggressive decisions, some tough decisions here and there, and uh, is far playing pretty well. But he is for sure uh, aware of stack sizes, or at least the the. Uh, consensus tournament theory on these stack sizes compared to the rest of the players. So Leo opens again from the button here. Uh, looks like he opened to about one and a half and it looks like Dan is a decision of the big blind. He's going to move all in, raise, all in with King-10 offsuit. And er, looks like he's... Yeah, this is Dan moving all in, not Michael. And Dan has the King-10. Yeah, and it's for only about... It's about eight million eight, total. Yeah, it says, it says about nine there, so that's about 18 blinds. It's a tough spot for Leo on the button here. He's ace four suited, is that right? Yeah. It's but it's really. I think honestly. he's gonna fold. I uh, think so I too. Think and it's that's kind of high on his on the end of his range of his open. Well, so especially if he's, if, he's opening, that, if he's opening every hand, then yeah, it's really high up. Yeah. His, so you gotta be open. you gotta be moving it in pretty wide, and I think Dan knows that, and I think this is a good play. Oh, I definitely love the play from Dan. Leo's facing a bet of eight million nine hundred thousand. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot for him to call. It's it's actually we only has like 14 million. It's like a good chunk of his stack here too. You know, and, and this is goes to what we said about the A6. This is a sort of similar decision where if you potentially just shove, you don't have a decision. And you know, I'm not saying Leo has to shove here. It's obviously for a lot more chips, but these are those types of situations where you can avoid them, you do avoid them. Have a call. Leo's and Leo does call. call. I don't mind that decision at all. He's, he's playing for first place right now. He's not worried about the next 12,000 jump. Uh, and as Tyler pointed out, this is a pretty good hand for Leo to have. And this is a fair fight here. I mean, it's Leo's Dan doesn't look too ahead. happy about that call. Well, I wouldn't think. <laughs> well, I, I agree with uh, with you guys. This when If you're going to call in that spot, just don't give them the chance to, to put it in. Just rip it all the way in. So but that's a good flop for Dan. Way. And Dan's going to take the lead right off the bat with the king on the flop. And now Leo's the one who's going to be behind. He's looking, for to, looking to improve. He's drawing to just an ace now on this river card. No, he didn't pick up any kind of straight draw on the turn, so. Down to just the, the Barry Greenstein, the ace on the river. Yeah. <laughs> Won't be there. It. So Dan Block is going to double up here. With that double, I think Dan just down. took the chip lead. Uh, He's going to move to 18.3 million. He has to be. Who is more that than him? sounds like the chip lead to me. Yeah, no one is more than Certainly that. Certainly, Dan Buzzgun doesn't have more, and we know we're looking at so Michael's now we're chips. We're talking about the chip lead being 35 big blinds right now? That's yeah. what we're talking That's about, yeah. We need, they need some players to bust out so they get some more How many uh, chips play. does Ben have? Do we have a rough idea? Ben has, I believe, he had 12 million when he four bet shoved. So he has 12 million plus, plus whatever that, he picked up. That, he probably got he's probably about million too. Mm, little less, probably about 15 okay. or 14, I would guess. So he's going to be in second place. Mm -hmm. And then we have, um, Leo's going to be in third. With uh, whatever's left after that hand, probably about eight million, uh, and then both Dan and Michael have read about. They're both short. They they're both about they're about ten blinds, right? A little bit more than that. I think they're both about seven or eight million. Ooh, so I thought Dan just folded on the button with five. You know what? Dan might be shorter. Yeah. I think Dan's are short stack. I think Michael is about eight or nine. We can count two, four, five, How many, you know? six. I see about six million for Michael right there. Yeah, Dan looks pretty short there. Dan has two, three, 
Yeah, Dan there? is about yeah. five, it yeah. looks like. I like seeing Leo still in good spirits right here. Yeah, that is that is a good sign for him. Yeah, it looks like Dan is about five yeah, points. So Dan two. with his ten blind, six five offsuit under the gun. We, I assume he's going to fold since he folded six three suited on the button. Fold yeah, that six three fold? suited that he folded on the button. I mean, you, I jam that sometimes, but only if I think the blinds are folding incorrectly, like they're way too tight, like they're for sure folding the king jacks and the ace tens and stuff like that. If Which I don't think that. Th in this the case, they're not. Left right. So I, also, I like that fold. A uh, pretty easy shot for Michael here on the button. Yeah, you, you're right. He has about six million, and Ben has a decision with the ace. Interesting. You know, wh what do you think about this? You know, Ben was kind of pained with the queen ten before. I think we might see a call here. It's a pretty similar hand, honestly. Ace two offsuit and queen ten offsuit have similar equities against the kind of range you would expect a button to move in. You with. Just with the ace, you feel like you're ahead. <laughs> right. <more. I'm laughs> it's so much more appealing. With thirty bigs and this is uh, like a 11, 12 big line shove. Does, I don't call here call. very often. I I don't I wouldn't call here unless I knew the person was shoving really wide. Which I don't think Michael is. I don't think so either. Here. He's shoving wide, but I mean, not that wide. I would shove wide here, but I don't I don't think these nice players are shoving as wide as I would be. So Michael's gonna be ahead. They do have an okay chance to chop here. We'll see what the flop is. Well, that brings some chop opportunities. So Ben's looking for the deuce to take the lead. Michael is looking for lower cards than an eight. Than eight yeah. So his kicker will play. Oh, That's an interesting, interesting one. It's good for both of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michael likes it because he can win the pot outright, but Ben likes it because he can win the pot with the four. Yeah. So a deuce, deuce on the, on the river <laughs> wow. is going to do it. And it's, a, it's somehow more painful to lose to the deuce than it is to lose to the four. Ben looks almost surprised that he won that pot. Wouldn't yeah. you be? <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks with the deuce time. on the river, the Michael will be eliminated Michael. in fifth That's place. Tough beat. Michael played awesome today. He did play really well. You know, he didn't have a lot of opportunities early on. When he did get chips, he really went after some more. Um, the, ran into a couple of hands. The king nine suited that he played against uh, Leo's ace ten was really impressive. That, that was a really good raise hand. on the ace four four yeah. flop. Was yeah, that was a perfect read. I don't of think he what knew what that small bet meant. He knew it was a feeler bet to see where he was at, and he was going to yeah. tell him he was behind. I don't exactly. think he knew how good of a raise. He I didn't know he, he had an ace, but yeah. still, I mean, I think he's. I think he did a really. He thought he had a hand. He would fold potentially to further action, aggression. And that's exactly, that's exactly what he did. Yeah. So Michael will take home fifty-eight thousand dollars for his not bad. fifth place finish. Not, not bad at all. Okay. So the next jump is still twelve thousand, or is it? Yeah, the next player is guaranteed yeah, fourth place, uh, seventy thousand two twenty-four. So another twelve thousand that you all just made with that elimination. Yeah. Yeah. The one after that is also another twelve thousand. Yeah, well, so twelve thousand, twelve thousand four hundred. It's really the, the last three spots is just time. Away. So the next jump is twelve thousand. The jump after that is forty three and a half thousand. So yeah. this is the time to play some poker. This is not the time to move up on the pace. Scale. So we're not exactly. gonna see Mr. Buzz gone, Mr. Integrity folding around for too much longer. <laughs> I so would hope not, no. Uh, with that pot though, Ben has moved into our chip lead. One million three. So we'll see if he tries 000. to good put some more pressure him. on these people. Absolutely good for him. He's opponent. Wow, again, Dan fold. does not do that with I'm the suited ace. Uh, this is we we've been saying all along we thought that Dan would attack Leo a lot more being in position on him with hands just like that and instead he lets it go. I think that honestly he's just like I said, he's a cash game player. He's used to playing very deep stacked. He's playing live cash, which is even more deep stacked. I think that he just is not very comfortable dealing with these thirty big blind stacks and doing things like three yeah. betting and that type of stuff. But here Leo opening with a twenty big blind stack, I mean you can really put a lot of pressure on him by three betting. I, I Especially now that the pay jumps are not as big of an issue anymore, I think you just yeah, lays it down. would go for it. I would yeah, go for it. Ram and jam it. Yeah. I wonder what uh, Buzz got. How many does he have? How many does Dan have? Dan has about 18. Dan Walk has about 18 million, and Leo has about 10 or 11 million. Anyway, super bonus comp dollars. If you play a minimum of 50 live action hours, you earn those super bonus comp dollars. That's a nice poker room here too. Really big. Nice. It's a phenomenal poker room here. Yeah, tables, great. all kinds of different yeah. games. So Woo! I don't play much cash, but, but when I do, I pretty much play. <laughs> nice here. Work. So. I actually play a decent amount of cash here, even though I live on the other coast. <laughs> you guys play a lot of cash, gags, Tyler? Um, I do. Not really. I mean, I, tournaments are my thing. I just, you know, I love the idea of sitting down and playing to a winner. You know, it is bad if you got a tough player on your left, you can't get up and walk away. You're just stuck playing against them, or you're going to lose. It's got its own wow. I mean, like aesthetic. That. I love that. It's, yeah. it's, I 
like playing poker because it's a strategy game, and I like playing strategy games and trying to outwit my opponents. Yeah, you know, so that's why tournaments are like the number one thing for me. Whereas in cash games, you always just think about that stuff. Which seat do you want? Which game do you want exactly. to do? In tournaments, you make the decision, okay, I'm going to play this. I think this is a good tournament for me. Well, then that's it. That's all out of your hands. You just have to play poker and deal with all those spots. I like that, well, too. That's pretty good. You know, and sometimes even if it's a tough tournament, you know, with some of these tournaments out there, that these high rollers and stuff, that, you know, it's an experience playing against good yeah. players. And you play it maybe because it's not the best all in. value He'll in the world, but you want to get out there and you want to get better and that type of stuff. Not at all so surprised to see Dan Bugs, Buzz gone shove in nine blinds with the nine yeah, in all. pretty standard good. there. Gets I blind, think he would Dan's do that even if he line. thought his opponent had a perfect calling range, but uh, he probably thinks that Leo's calling a little bit too tight. Yeah, I'm not sure, honestly. You know, we saw Leo call the reshot with ace four suited. That's true. Um, so I don't think he's a guy that's going to fold like ace five there out of the big Right. He, he may not, he he may not be calling. He might not call like queen ten and stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Cards in the air. I, can start and I wonder if that. Dan's uh, recognizing the what we talked about with the the pay jumps now that this is really the time to gamble. You know, as a short stack, there's just how much kid folding can you do? When there's four people left, you're like looking at these guys that have more chips than you, and you're like, let's go. Like I have to win this tournament. Yeah, and going into the table, Dan was saying to me. That he didn't know how much he wanted to sacrifice his chance of getting the first that and second raise. because of all the short stacks or if he should make sure to move up the fourth. But now that he has moved up this high on the pay scale, he knows to Takes start five, playing and give himself a chance Leo. to win. There's uh, not much to gain by playing tight at this point. There's really not. It's funny, like, you know, from our perspective, we keep saying they need to open up. They should be doing. They should be playing more pots. And they should be attacking each other. And there's really just not too much of that going on. We haven't really seen many big bluffs. You haven't even seen opens that are that light. You know, we saw an open with Ace-8. I think Dan Walk opened the button with 9-6 uh, off. It's like some of the worst hands we've seen. I don't think we've seen a light 3-bet. Yeah. We saw the 3-bet three three with the King-9. Nine. Nine. Michael 3-bet the King-9 King suited. 5-8 uh, suited five eight from Dan Walk in yep. the beginning with a double barreled off the jack. Yep. That was the biggest one. move we've seen really yeah, made at this small table. Oh, I guess Michael's also was, uh, was up there with the King-9. That was a big play, yeah. I would and the 10-6 the that uh, King Rob here, made that, that bluff. Pretty close. I think he's going to shove, too. Yeah, I yeah. the 10-6 was a big play. It was a big plus five play there by, by Rob. Dan verifying You think this is close, huh? I, don't, I wouldn't even think about this. <laughs> I would just shift You know, it. again, it's one of those spots where if Dan can fold and maybe wheel bust the next hand and he moves up money, you know, it's something to think about. Right. I think that coming to the conclusion the shove is the correct one. Yeah, you definitely should think it through. Sure. You know, I mean, I think the king nine suited is not even remotely close. Line? You know, yeah. but when you when you tick it down a notch, there's got to be a line somewhere. Down. Yeah, I don't think the king eight is. That close. I think king I eight is, is is good enough to for sure shove here. You know, I like just kind of stepping back and weighing all the options and. Yeah. Before you come to a complete, complete conclusion. Thinking is almost always good. Until unless your first instinct was really good, then you think yourself out of it. Then thinking is bad. And that's honestly the thing I've that, done that. Yeah, I've done that, that happens a lot. So here's a reset here. Leo, chip leader coming into Dan the day, button, has a 21 big blind stack. And that's right around what he started yeah, with. Yeah, pretty similar. I was just yeah. going to say to what he started with. He started he's with he's 13 had million. A second or he's down a little, but he's Leo's pretty in much third right now. Okay. He's pretty had much maintained his, his stack. Yeah, he's had a little bit of a roller coaster, but the, the jumps have not been that high. Pretty much just been smooth sailing the whole way, just maintaining. It's probably, I don't know how much of the live stream he's noticed. If he knows he's been bluffed out of pots, pretty big pots raise. twice. But uh, he doesn't seem to have letting it affect him. It seems like One he's million, still playing his thousand. game, still still attacking. And, and here he's raising 90 off under the gun. So that's, I think. Now, this is what I play. think that, you know, we should be seeing. We should be seeing more of. I think we should be seeing more of Leo opening, N not even Leo, just just now. players opening. So this Daniel, Leo takes the pot. And Leo just takes it down with the money, which is, you know, like we've been saying, we should see more of this. We should see these guys trying to pick up more of these uncontested pots because everyone is playing their cards pretty much face up. Yeah, if I had, if I was a betting man, I would imagine that Leo is not watching the live stream and is not. He's not even aware that he folded cards. the jacks that were good and an ace that was good. Yeah, probably no, not. No, probably, uh, probably possible, not. Yeah. Uh, Dan was aware of that. I, and here's what we've been talking about. The next the next pay jump is 12,400 more, and then after that is a whole lot more, 43,500. And then second to first is, of course, a, a huge difference. That first place prize being 194,500. That's an additional almost 125,000 from 
where they're at right now. So that's oh, really worth fight. fighting for. And yeah. It's time to ignore the next pay jump and time to go for the win. Pretty Benfold. Benfold Jack very, seven suited. Very surprised. And with that, yeah, that's Dan's not going to be Dan's going to love that he folded because he gives him an opportunity to shove and pick up some chips Dan here. Dan is definitely going to shove here, I would think. I would shove pretty quickly here with yep, this hand. Me too. You know, Dan is honestly the only person at this table that seems to be taking his time with some decisions. Most of the decisions we've seen have been very wow. snap shove, snap oh, folds, oh, snap calls. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't agree with that. You know, the logic is kind of disjointed here. Yeah, the shoving the king eight, which is like reasonably under close. The gun, suited, king yeah, suited under the gun. Now yeah, this is one player he has to get through. Queen yeah. eight offsuit on the blind here. The yeah, the, the amount of like EV of chips or whatever dollars, whatever you're going to pick up in those hands, I mean. Uh, first off, I would think it's higher with the queen eight, personally. Answer but out. it's got to be at yeah, least because of, because of the fewer opponents. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be at least reasonably close I between those two hands. I think he's thinking about uh, who's in the blinds and at. their calling ranges. I think because with the king eight, uh, he he must have thought that he had more fold equity in the, even though he has to get more through through more people just because of who was behind him. Like so you're saying, the person in the big blind perhaps is not going to call off as wide. Right. I think that's so. Who's in the big blind when he's I shoving? Think Dan it's Walk was in the king eight, and in this case, no. It's the king Leo. king eight. It's going to be Michael. Oh, okay. Or I'm sorry, uh, Ben. So we missed some ac we missed some action here. Six like I would blind them blind. I would guess it's pot. The pot is limp. Leo limp. Pot is one point two million. Wow! Look at that flop. Limp pot blind them blind. This is not fair. Real cooler. Well, Leo again is gonna. Leo leads out with top pair. Is that what happens? And and Dan just calls with with bottom. I would imagine they they're gonna get it in right here. Can Leo find a fold with Queen Seven to raise here? I mean, he's been folding hands million, like this. Kind of Dan may not raise. He Dan may just may call down. Dan may not raise. I, I don't what? think he does, actually. That's in the turn. Wow. Oh, that's a pretty I small like bet, though. at all, guys. You, you, I want to get Dan. it in there, for sure. I think if you're going to get it in, you have to get it in on the flop. Oh, yeah, I would have I liked to see a raise oh. on the flop. There is. <laughs> what? How does well, that's a really Dan bad river card, river card, and, and Leo's going to hate it even more once he sees it. Leo left some value on the table there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's shocked. I like that reaction. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> now, <laughs> let's think about this for a second. Yeah, so it, it's queen six four with two spades, and the turn brings a flush draw also. Backdoor flush draw. Yep. So now Leo bets the flop. Leo bets the turn. Dan calls both times. Is it possible that Leo's just thinking Dan has one of these draws? Yeah. Dan has seven five. Dan has two clubs. Dan has two spades, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's, that's why he checks the river. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's that's okay. Anyway. I mean, it's, you know, it's I don't think logic. it's out of the question. Also, you can't just check and always have a bad hand every time you check. You exactly. Wanna, you want to have it sometimes when you're checking, or otherwise you can you open up you open up your opponent to run over you. So I don't like Dan not raising the flop. I don't like Dan. Not raising the flop. If I was Dan, I would just raise the flop. I think. I think that's very reasonable. I think Wheel's gonna put it in with a number of worse hands. I wonder what he was thinking in that spot. I mean, Maybe just didn't did. feel comfortable getting. All of those chips, and he bro. still has, you know, he still had like 15, 10 or 15 million yeah. at that point. You know, they were pretty deep, not pretty deep, but I mean, yeah, they were deep for this table, the situation. Yeah. Well, you know, you and I would have gone broke in that hand, <laughs> so, and Dan didn't, so there's that. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I would have gone broke too, for the record. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Although, I might have raised pre flop and just won it there. So. Huh? That's a good point, too. Uh, <laughs> I mean, do we really think Dan is limping from the small blind with a strong hand? Me, Leo, Sorry, Leo, Leo, Leo. Pr probably not. So yeah. when I no, see him limp, I'm just raising and hope he folds. And if he wants to play out of position against me, I'll deal with it later. You'll figure it out then. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's an issue for me. I don't I don't like when the guy is ca is is likely to call when he, he didn't have a plan. He just limps because he wanted to see a flop, and then you raise, and now he reevaluates and might call. I don't want to have to play that pot. Yeah, I mean, not the hand like six four offsuit. Right, Maybe. exactly. If if he has a bad hand and wants to limp call, I I don't know. I, I see what you're saying. Six four offsuit's a bad hand, but I don't know. You might flop two pairs. Anyway, <laughs> it's interesting to see Wheel just like look at eight seven offsuit and then just fold. Or is he open the nine eight off onto the gun last orbit? I wonder yeah. if there's any sort of, you know, like randomizer or like why he's why he's folding one and then not even considering the other. Some kind of so game flow decision. Then yeah. flats from the small blind here up against Dan Walks but yeah. Looks reasonably standard on both parts. Seems okay. You know, you could consider three betting if you're sure. Ben. 
You get three back fold. Does damage size for that? Yeah, I don't think that's a terrible idea. That fine. This is fine too. Ben is first so we got two overcards for Ben in the small blind, and Dan has flopped. Thanks Second pair. The probably will go check check here, right? Guy, well, he might see not. bet. He's gonna bet. You know, I, I think he's gonna think he gets some calls from Ace Hot, and he'd um, probably be right. And every card that comes in the turn is bad for you. Yeah, you protect your hand a lot here. I would imagine my, Dan's just gonna fold nice with. Ben or I'm sorry, yeah. Ben's gonna fold yeah, with. Yeah, for sure. Just this. Uh, yeah. Ben with that looking yeah. shows the five of hearts. <laughs> These guys have. We had Dan, Dan, Ben, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Ping, Mike. Well, Everybody's one's been calling him Mike. And Sebastian. He's the only one to one outlier. Yeah, Sebastian was the outlier. <laughs> Travel also. He was. Oh, yeah. He knew Travel. Yeah, he yeah. goes by T, though. Oh. <laughs> Does he really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. These guys are, I'll tell you one thing about this whole font table. These guys are definitely having a good time. They are, yeah. This, from the start, these, these, all three of them were sitting in a row from the start. And they've been chatting it up the entire time from the second they sat down to even now. No matter who's winning, who, they're all just having fun. So that's always good to see. Yeah, that comfort level in this big of an event is surprising. One million. Dan Walk is going to open a cutoff. Yeah, min race. First real hand he's had in a really long time. Dan takes it down. What do I need to look? I count every step in front. Dan making a joke that Wheel didn't even look at his cards before folding because Wheel looks at his cards the <laughs> second they are dealt. Oh, that's and a good thing to talk about. Let's talk about that. I look at my cards immediately when they're dealt because I get more time to think and no one's looking at me when I look at my cards. Uh, a lot of people decide that they want to look when it's their turn because they want to look at everyone else when they look at their cards. But I don't think if you look right away, I think that you still get to look at everyone when they look at their cards. You do. You do. This is usually true if you're quick about it. Uh, when, do, when do you look? I look when the action gets to me, but honestly, I haven't really rethought about that since I was taught to do that, you know, 15 years ago when I yeah, started I learning to play poker. Yeah, and that that was what everyone said, and it made some sense. You you don't come to a decision about what you want to do until you have other information. You don't let it affect. And I think it's good for players starting out to kind of pay attention to what's happening and not have a preformed idea. Like they look down and see two jacks, let's say, like, oh, I'm going to play this hand. And then there's a bunch right, of people they've already decided that. Yeah. Yeah. But like, once you get over that, once you become a good enough player that that's not a factor, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense, Tyler. If you look right away, then you have more time to consider all the various possibilities that might come across. And you don't have people looking at you while you look at your hand. You might not be able to tell. Well, hold on. I want to talk about, let's go back a second. If you're one of those guys who, you know, you don't know what to do you and when it folds to you, like you have a guy who looks at, you know, two sixes and they're like, oh, man. Should I raise his hand? Should I call? Should I fold? What should I do? Fold. It folds to them, and they yeah, look at their hand, and they think for like a minute and a half before doing anything. Fold. You maybe you should be yeah, looking a little sooner and yeah. starting yeah. to formulate an idea of what you want to do. Yeah, you definitely should have to. You definitely should think quickly. I think if you're going to wait until the action's on you, and I usually do think pretty quickly. But I, I see what you're saying. Like when you're starting out, maybe they're going to be giving off, giving away information by playing this way. But on the other hand, they s when you're first learning poker, it's more important to work on your own decisions than it is to worry about giving away tells and stuff. Sure, and it. sure. That's true. We've all seen the guy who, you know, who's he's already looked at his hand, and then his buddy comes over, and you're like, wait, 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 I got to play this hand. Wait, <laughs> right. wait, wait, wait. And then it folds to them, like, raise, raise. And you know they have a good <laughs> hand. I had a guy try to reverse tell me on that in the main event in the World Series once. I had raised, and this guy, three bet, and he's, as I'm trying to think about what to hand. do, he finds his buddy on the rail and like shakes his hand and says hi to him. It's like, there's no way this is a good hand. I should have it on him and he folded. it. <laughs> well, I think it's better for poker in general if everyone looks right away. It would speed everything up. So I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all in favor of speeding things up. Yeah. I'm in favor of speeding things up, but I look when I turn. Yeah. If it's if if my decision is to open or not open, yeah. I don't think I've oh, ever made that decision yeah, in less than you and I play pretty point three seconds. Right. <laughs> you and I play pretty quick, Gax. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been I've been on take my oh, time really? sometimes, flop, but not free flop tanking about a decision like that. But flop, yeah, on the flop, flop is the longest I take when I when I'm considering what's going to happen on the turn and river. Dan checks. So we open the button and Dan called out of the small. Yes. Is that what happened here? Bernhardt. And does go check check with the two fives. Does not see that. Three of clubs. Well, I don't know how about I feel about this flat by Dan. Pretty good card for two fives, I would say. A p the three pairing on the turn. Uh, I don't know if Dan wants to try to bluff Leo out of this pot. Looks like he is going to do that. Oh, um, I was usually going to say, like, 
Dan doesn't have that much equity. Dan His hand isn't great, but Dan manages to win pots post flop that I would never even consider winning. He made so a big bet here. He bet 3.35 million into a three and a half million dollar pot. This is what wow. Dan does best: is play post flop and apply a massive amount of pressure. And if I was gonna pick a winner. Eight of well, not on that river card yeah, anymore, not but not if the river, river bricked, card. I would bet that Dan was going to Right, I was going to say that Dan's Leo probably thinking that Leo didn't check back this flop with a flush draw, and most likely. Ten. So, Leo shows pocket five. He's, when the flush card hits in the turn, he's probably thinking two blocks are going to win this. Now, of Absolutely. course, when, when the fourth club comes, that's a different story, because when Leo calls the turn, you can give him the club, and in fact, he does have a club. It's a bad club. He might have might have been able to get blocked out. Who knows? But um, it's not a good river card for Dan to fire another bullet on. I don't think. No, I don't think so. No, not that river. So a question from Twitter. H man, Colin H man asks: When a player moves all in and there's no play to be made, is there any reason to tank with sub premium hands like we saw the Queen Ten offsuit in the small blind? Well, first off, I think that the Queen Ten was maybe actually considering. Yeah, calling. he was thinking yeah. about playing. He was um, actually thinking about it. So we saw we saw Dan Buzgon tank for, I mean, not very long, but a little bit with I think he had six five offsuit under the gun where. You know, we knew he, everyone knew he was gonna, just going to fold, and he and thought about it for a few seconds. Is there any reason to do any of that? Well, I would hope that everyone listening doesn't ever do this because it slows <laughs> everything down. But yes, you, you do balance a little bit by Leo by folds. looking and having Dan no decision folds. at all and tanking a second and folding. Then when you look at a hand that is kind of borderline and you tank for a second, it doesn't Dan prove that it's borderline. It, it could but if you're last to act, it, it does that does it matter yeah, at all, or is it only for people down. behind you potentially? Oh right, last act, of course not. So we'll hold it. If before when Dan was in the small blind, he shoved blind versus blind, then Leo just instantly folded. Right. I feel like in a situation like that, if Dan take or if Leo takes like just like a quarter of a second to not instantly fold, then maybe Dan blind feels blind a blind little blind less blind easy blind about shoving next time. Blind. Maybe he's not so happy. Oh, this guy's just looking at his cards and so instantly folding. Gags, your argument is if you take a little more time, you might get a read later for when you actually do. It's need possible. It. I mean, you know, this is not something that I would do, you know, 100, 200 in a tournament, but when they're playing four handed, I think that may if I can make Dan not shove a borderline hand on me next door because he I knows see. that I'm considering calling. It's worth a shot. So it's not so much about the read. It's about affecting Dan's play. Yeah, sort future. of. Yeah. You know, and there's Dan some guys that that's not going to affect. And honestly, Buzzgon is probably one of those guys that he's not going to change his role. But Dan there are Dan players Dan out Dan there that Dan they know, like, oh, this oh, guy almost, almost called me last, last time. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. There are, yeah, there are definitely some reasons for fake tanking. Blind. Fake Daniel tanking blind, every now and then. Blind. But uh, I don't do it there, It's Yeah, it's so brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it slows down the game so much when people far that I'm definitely not an advocate of doing it. I mean, I think when you get enough experience playing poker, you know that you might get called when you get, that that should just always be a factor in your situ in your decision when you're thinking about moving in from the small blind. It shouldn't matter how close the guy came to calling the time before. Cards you know that he's gonna make his decision based on how you've been playing it, based on what his cards are, and it's not gonna matter, you know, what he did is probably not gonna be dependent on how long you took the last time. No, yeah. I wouldn't think so. And Dan's been here before he knows he knows that what the shove and what not the shove. Buzz should be shoved. Okay. It's a close one, but I would I'd, be, be, I'd be shoving. I think that if he shoves here, something is off. Because I cannot uh, understand shoving the this hand eight. into these people and folding Queen 8 blind. Well, I think what's off is the folding the Queen 8. I yeah, think that was that's, that's well, what's off. This is least consistent. Okay. Folding here too. okay, I think that's fine. Like it's, I don't think it's a, a muscle shove. I think shoving is probably acceptable. But I think that again, it's a it's a reasonably borderline. I would shove there all day. Constantly. A reasonably borderline yeah. hand. I would have lost to a six suit. Well, I would have got it. Not in necessarily. A yes, exactly. That's, that's yeah. the thing. I would have got it in with a six. No, but a six suit might not have put it in. Uh, for an eight blind shove from the button, I think. There's someone behind you. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think Leo is folding there. I don't think he's. Folding I don't think he is either. But it's not. Leo anyway, this is obviously Dan. not Small relevant. Blind, this is the exact two cards he happened to have this time. That's oh, right. the right play or not. Right. Yeah. Resides in Brooklyn, New York, like me. Leo Goldberger. You guys neighbors? You guys chat Possibly. It's a big borough. I don't it is. I it mean, is a pretty big borough. It, there's many, many neighborhoods, and so I'm not quite sure where he is. Daniel? But we're pretty close, I guess. If we're in, you know, with the, in at least a few 10 or 15 miles of each other. No. All right, so. Daniel raises all in. This one seems pretty clear. Dan shoves Jackson off, and yeah, I think this is. Leo folds. He's down to eight bigs. Dan folds. Yep. And he's going to get, get it through. through. Yeah. Dan folds. Daniel takes down the pot. And we're seven, 74 hands into this final table. If you 
had to guess. How many hands do you think they're going to play total this final table? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'd say a, we're probably about halfway through, maybe a little bit less. So I would say I'll take 125 as the over-under. I was thinking a little less. I was thinking around 100, which makes me think the right number is going to be like 110 or something, somewhere between the weird. I would take – I would – I would say, I would split the difference, because we're gonna play a lot of. They're gonna play at least twenty hands of heads up, probably. That's really goes depends pretty on who quick. Gets heads up That's and true. How, what the stacks are. That's true. But usually the hands variance. just come much faster, so the number starts going a little higher. So I, I would guess your one twenty is probably a, a reasonable guess. You know, they're just running out of chips. The blinds are gonna go up to six hundred thousand soon. In the half an hour blinds are, <laughs> are rough. Well, they're up to, uh, I think they're up to 50 minutes now. Oh, they are? I didn't yeah. even realize yeah, that. Yeah, they went okay. up to 40 sometime on uh, day two, and then go to 50. We got uh, to 50 in the halfway. money, I think. Yeah, okay, well, that's great. I think that's, uh, what yeah. I know that. that's when I noticed it. Yeah, anyway. it goes sometime to 40 at some point. Uh, 40 is day two, and then yep. it goes to 50 some point in the money, yeah. Yep. So it looks like uh, Dan Walk is opening the button with Jack-10, and Ben calls out a small with the King-Jack. And this is one of the few flops that they're probably, one of the few boards they're probably going to actually get a better two in on. Uh, check check on the flop is pretty standard. Yeah. I think that you're going to see the turn go bet call, and then probably check check on the river. Yeah, I was going to say, guess. probably not too many bets with the second pair and an ace out there, so but they'll get some money in. The post flop stuff is going to be really handcuffed by Dan being eight big blinds when all these other guys have 25 and 30. Dan buzz gone, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah buzz gone only has eight big, so they don't want to bust. Um, I would be trying to gauge right, whether or not the, uh, the other players are Heads thinking about moving ben. up or if they're thinking about winning the tournament because if someone is clearly thinking about moving up, having Dan have eight big blinds, I mean, I would really be attacking that player. That's a really good point, Tyler. Now you're going to get a value bet. Of course, he made two pairs. Yeah, this is an interesting river because I, I think that we might see Dan Walk try to bluff now. Interesting. Like, well, I don't think he's going to call here, really. I think that there's just too many strong hands in Ben's range here. Like, Ben can just easily have a hand like an ace. Wow. He did. Yeah, so he does ben. bluff that here. That was a really yeah, good uh, all You're all over that. Game. That's a tough <laughs> spot. So the reason I find this bluff a little interesting is that when Ben flats this small blind, I'm giving him a lot of Broadway-type cards. And so there's a lot of two pairs and even straight combinations that he can show yeah. up with here. And so... If I think there's a lot of aces. value betting hands that he's probably not going to fold, aces up, kings up, queen 10. It, it but at the same time, what if he's ace queen or ace 10 or king queen? I and don't that think ace stuff. queen is really in his flatting oh. range. Pre the I think he does the make the problem. call. That's a great call. I think the biggest problem there so is the diamond, didn't the diamond. have Ben covered. If if it if it puts Ben to the test for all of it with with Buzcon only having eight bigs, I think that might work. I just don't see Ben value betting an ace on that river or flat. I don't think that's much of his range. I, I think I think that's often a value bet when he bets that river card in that run out. And if, it, if I think you win with the jack anyway, so I don't king, crazy about this. You might be able to get a king to fold and maybe maybe a, an ace. A king to fold if he what? If it, if the king, if the king value bet there, the river, you, the, your jack ten will give it. Make a king on that river, you think? I mean, I probably he would. Might. I mean, don't forget, like, we saw we saw Ben flatting a number of hands out of the small blind before. You know, uh, Dan Walk didn't get to see all of them, maybe, but we saw him flat the queen jack and all that thin, stuff. It's a pretty thin. Uh, and even a hand like king jack is not an auto call there. No, it's definitely not an know. auto call because if he, if he says all this to himself and says, well, it's tough for him to be bluffing here. I can't beat a hand if he's not bluffing. So yeah. whenever you can't, whenever you can't beat his value bets, it's always a tough call. I mean, yeah. you really can't. If he, if he's value betting there, it means he hit the straight very much, uh, or I guess possibly <laughs> aces up. Down to three players. You know, I'm like not sure. What, what hand do you think Dan is really blind? representing with that shove there? He's not representing that. Well, that's, I mean, really representing that's really the problem. He's representing two kings. Right? Yeah. You know, he can for two sure kings, have two okay. kings. That's Two kings, um, I'll give you that one. But I have a king in my hand. Well, obviously, he doesn't know that. But he can. Um, what was the th what was the turn card? The um, it was a low card. He could have that set, whatever that yeah, was. Right. I don't know if it was a four or five. Um, it was, it was all in. Another all in here, by the way. Pocket Dan shoves oh, king Leo, nine, which of course king he should. Diamonds, nine nine from so pretty standard uh, race call here. <laughs> yeah, he might have been better off trying. And the other Dan, the other Dan will be at risk now. 
Yes, and Dan Buzgon's just happy he made another 12,000, I think. For whenever, sure. However this turns out. Flop. Well, but King I could flop, flop for okay. Buzzcon. And Buzzcon will jump out to the lead here. Leo now is going to be looking for a 10 or running straight cards to take back this pot from him. Queen on the turn. There's halfway to his running straight cards. Leo picks Still up some outs. Bad shape, Leo gets more outs. Let's see a river. And the river card. It's another king. Just, just king's full. full house. Dan improves to full, full house and definitely will secure the double there. So with three players left now, they are all guaranteed 82,000. Let's catch our breath here and talk with about With the elimination that. of Dan Walk right. in fourth. Dan Walker in 70,000, 224 for his fourth place. Up, four and Dan Walker, consolation in the fact that the short stack doubled up the next hand after he busted. <laughs> so maybe he wasn't going to get to third anyway. And let's give Ben Beam some credit there for making that call. As you pointed out, Gax, that's not an auto call. No, that's no, a tough if call. If Dan Walk has the hand that he's trying to sell that he has, you can't win. And the only way you can win is if he's bluffing. He was bluffing, and bluff raising is not a very common occurrence in the river, especially no, for that amount of chips. You don't even get to see very many that's rivers. A, that's a really a hell of a call by, uh, by Ben. Yeah. I think one of the things that makes really it a little bit of an easier call is that you can pretty much say that he ne Dan Walk never has queen 10. He's Actually just going to bet the flop with queen 10. Like, he really just cannot have the nuts. There was no backdoor straight draw or, backdoor or no backdoor flush draw or anything like that. I would have liked that play a little bit better if there was, you know, a, a backdoor flush draw that got is, there. Is there any oh. chance that he oh. could have Dan limp, limp the button with aces? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Right. Um, I was going to say, is, is there any chance he checked back? Going to the flop with ace three players, but anyway, I mean he could. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think that's out of the question. I don't so think checking back is necessarily Jack out of the hearts, question with the queen's ten. Eight of spades. Twice, I think it's shot, unlikely, but I check back and then call a bet. I yeah, yeah, calling I a bet. Yeah, I wouldn't. Sense. I would have a hard time. Did Dan hit this flop, by the way? I'm just next. curious. Uh, let me <laughs> see. <laughs> uh, he's he didn't actually. He didn't hit it hard enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah guys. Okay, hand. <laughs> As we've determined, you don't always want to flop a set of aces, but I think. I mean, look at the equity. Willing to gamble with this Jeez, one. like this is a board where, like, if I'm Dan, I'm like kind of upset because. You know, I fought the set of aces, but I'm like, man, look at all these straight draws and flush like, draws. Like, have that's good. I got a, I got a bet, it, I guess. Yeah. But someone he has something. so much. No one has any. As right. turns yeah. out, no one has Leo with right. less than one percent. He's not dead, but he's has less than one percent equity. Leo folds. And, and we know ben Ben's not going to touch this Daniel flop with just nothing. Dan then Dan suppresses a smile yeah. successfully. It looks like I think Dan has played really well, and he he passed up some some shove spots that maybe we wouldn't that uh, might have kept him around in the tournament. Um, but he is for sure held the best cards out of anyone. In the tournament. He has gotten a few premium hands. I don't know. Leo, remember Leo got jacks like four hands in a row. <laughs> <laughs> four hands in a row. Yeah, he did. He did have jacks. Ben and Danny are the blinds. All right, the, the third difference between third and second is, as we mentioned before, forty-four thousand, forty-three and a half thousand dollars. So this is getting serious here. Now I've been in these spots where sometimes uh, you would think a player would want to wait because the next jump is so significant, just to life, real life money. Um, but on the other hand, you know that you just locked up eighty thousand dollars, and you might feel a little like a free roll. You know, you feel like you just locked up all this money, and so humble for it now. Yeah, and that's not necessarily the right mindset, and for sure is right. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not, but I, it's very tempting to think exactly that way. The yes. happy tilt, you know, you, you just, yeah. that's why a lot of times you see the, you know, everybody's laughing and in a good mood and and all that once you get into the higher money. There's some amount of relief also. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you come in, you make the final table. I mean, Buzzgon, for example, had 10 bigs, and you're like, God, I might get 10th or 9th or 8th, and that's definitely Our possible. And now you're three-handed. You button. don't have that many more chips, but you're guaranteed 80,000. You're some amount of weight is off your shoulders. You can Absolutely. say, at least I got this much. Yeah. At least I did this. For pretty much everyone would have said, all right, at least if I get third, that's good. I'll, yeah. I'll take Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So even though there's a whole lot at stake here, they have to feel good about their day no matter what. It's sure. So. Yeah. Having said that, I've busted third pretty miserably. Several times. <laughs> <laughs> yep, me too. Here even. We got it. Yeah, me too. I don't think I've ever the gotten third in a tour last tournament. Really? No. Six I mean, I don't play wide. Six max in November, I finished. I remember I you finished made a run in that, Yeah, actually. and I had, I had the guy who ended up winning all in three times. And I was <laughs> ahead, ahead two, three to one favorite twice and coin for the third time and lost them all. The 2012 WPT, I got third. It's my biggest Pretty score. Pretty good result. Yeah, my biggest, my biggest score to date. My biggest score actually is, was in this building also. 
My biggest score was in the Bellagio, and it was Daniel freaking 11 years ago at this point, which is kind of sad. Wow. You're showing your age, man. <laughs> yeah, I know it. I they know can't I, yeah. see you. Just, just keep <laughs> keep it down. Well, a lot of aces so at this table. You're 32 then. You've been playing for Right, exactly, years. yes. I was 21 years in one day when I, yeah. when I had that score 11 years ago. Let's see. 1,500,000. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Like, I honestly wouldn't hate to see a limp here from Leo in the small blind. You know, he limped before, and he's been, ben you know, uh, Ben's been playing reasonably snug out of the big. He doesn't have me on the big blind. He wants to raise the 6-4 exactly. suit. So, yeah. Well, what he raised and got a call by the 9-6 suited, so I like that play, too. Yeah, that yeah. works out. This is, this is going to get even better for him now. Leo kind of, I feel like Leo has a little bit of a live tell. I feel like he kind of, when he has a big hand preflop, tries to act disinterested. Leo bets. I noticed that million. earlier, and I feel like he's doing it here. I hadn't noticed that, Gags, but now that I'm watching closely, I don't think you're crazy. Put it that way. I'm, I'm very hesitant to ascribe like that. It's just a to tell. People. Of, yeah, of course, of course. But I see what you're saying. It's a little easier. Oh, graphics it's it's on the screen. Screen. <laughs> It's much easier because <laughs> we no, see. But no, I, I believe you. We I see every <laughs> hand that we know if someone's you know bluffing or not. Yeah. Whereas when you're playing live, you you rarely get to see that. Wow. You pick up spades too. Really interesting card. Wow. Wow, all and, in, and Ben instantly moves all in, and Leo that's a snaps pretty, him off. That's a pretty big all in. I'm surprised. The pot was about $6 million, I thought, and you shoved for, for 10 is that right? Yeah, I shoved for a little more than the size of the pot. That's I, I mean, don't get it. Is it for value or is it a bluff? I you know, I, don't know he, I think this is one of those spots where he has a really good hand, and he's just like, if I take it down, I take it down. Kind of like that not, ace Sam we talked about. Yeah. And the river's a brick. And that was the only that was going to secure a double up. What a, what a trap by Leo that was. Great check by Leo. Um, I don't mind a small bet. Your hand has some value, but you, you're not, by just ripping, you're probably not getting called by worse. No, you're not. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. To fold hand. too. I mean, you might so you might get Jack Nine or something to fold. Yeah, like maybe. It's, I mean, it's pretty thin. There's not a whole lot. I mean, probably what he's thinking was, I'm never that far behind, so I'm just going to take my chances. Exactly. It was very but fast too. So yeah, he, he just kind of reacted to the card rather yeah. than taking his time to think. And again, about you know, Ben bit. likes to gamble. He's not a player, and he doesn't want to make a big mistake. And he knows that moving in there can't be that bad. Right. So that's it what he's can't doing. Can't be that bad. Kind of cutting, cutting, cutting his losses. And it can't know, be. You know, you have so much right, equity right. versus literally any hand in the deck. If that's his biggest misstep today, that's uh, a pretty good day. Yeah, that's yeah. a great day. I mean, like we said, Ben's going to be pretty happy however this turns out, but I'm sure he will win through this whole thing. Yeah. I like that they have some chips now. I mean, yeah. there's some Yet we've seen here. more all-ins in the last, you know, 20 minutes than we saw all day yeah. earlier when they had eight and six <laughs> big points. <laughs> yeah, they're all waiting for each other to bust out. That's well, funny how that works out, though. I might be tempted if I were either Ben or Leo to shove over if Dan opens his button, because I, I don't think Dan's going to want to call off 20 blinds to... If Dan opens his button, you're saying? Yeah, if Dan opens his button, exactly. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a pretty good good read. You know, Dan has been opening a number of buttons as well. And he has chips to do now without just shoving, and so he can, he's Eight now vulnerable to the re-steal if, the if they choose it the to go that way. Now, we line. haven't seen a whole lot of that happen. So. No, we haven't seen a whole lot of reshoving just yeah. in general. You can actually 3-bet Dan now and still fold. It'd have to be pretty small, but Dan's the type of guy that isn't going to be taking a flop in position for. He's uh, not going to peel. He's not going to peel. He's not going to make it really small. He's not going to four bet light twenty blinds over a flop. Exactly. No, probably not. So this is a spot where I would I would three bet very small over Dan's button open with a lot of things. I'd love to have, a but I probably wouldn't need it. Leo with two sixes is going to most likely open the button here. Can't imagine he'll do anything else. Raise. We don't know how much it is yet. Leo raises. So we'll see how Michael, or yeah, we'll see how Ben responds after that big One loss there. He lost a good chunk of his stack. He doesn't look thrilled about it. No, he doesn't. Age, but but uh, looks like he folds the small. 39 bigs he still has. That's a lot. That's a lot of chips. Now, this is a little more than 2.5x open here from Leo. And Dan is. And Jack Nine, obviously, I like this to Ben personally. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, the sizing is a little bit bigger, <laughs> so it's not like wild. amazing, but your hand is still pretty good. You have good equity versus a lot of diamonds, stuff. So, diamonds, four hearts, yeah, I mean, in this situation, like Daniel. you're gonna win the pot against most of Leo's hands here. Turn card. So now that the flop has gone check check, Dan could think about betting for value with that turn card. He might just want to check and call because he has so much equity yeah, in the pot. I like checking. There. Yeah, sure. He's gonna, yeah. I would think he checks. 
might get a little Now Leo bets the sixes, Leo which is One somewhat million, interesting. So we can check down. back the flop. I, I think Leo's just trying to take it down in case Dan just completely whiffed. Yeah. You Dan know, you don't want try to blow a 10 out of the pot, but I probably wouldn't in this spot. I would I, probably I, just call. I'd be slightly worried that Leo has a hand like, I don't know, queen two, like just a just one queen, not second card that's blank. But I think you still have to just call here. You beat some hands. You beat hands like maybe ace jack. So Leo bet one and a half million into about three million, and Dan's got about nine million effective here. So it would be a pretty, not a huge shot, but a pretty big shot if you were to ship it in here. And it looks like he's just going to call. Daniel calls one. The only the downside million. of just calling here is you're going to you could river. be faced with a pretty tough river decision. Yeah, that's true. Or of spades. But not yeah. necessarily. You're not always getting double barreled here. And no, Leo hasn't been bucks. running big bluffs either. And we this haven't is a pretty good card for Dan. That. Leo is. doesn't have that's a great right. hand to bluff with because he has shown yeah. value himself. Yeah. So and that Dan's nine that's is a hard nine of spades from Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Leo shows his hand there, which I don't know if I really like. Oh no. Takes it down, but pokes it back. You know, I think he wanted to show, it seemed like he almost showed Dan, like, oh, look, I had the best hand pre-flop. Yeah, he was showing that he wasn't opening the button light. But I, I feel like you give away more with your flop check and your turn bet. Right. Especially to a player as experienced as Buzz gone there. Yeah, for sure. Five minutes remain in this level. Ben is the button. Dan is on the small blind. <laughs> Leo is the big blind. Cards are in the air. Leo, Leo looks a little nervous. Oh, it looks like the stress is starting You know, it, it's funny because he looked more comfortable when there were 10 left. He was yeah. like having a great time and Action he's still chip leader. He's in great shape to take this thing down, but he does look a little more stressed for sure. So let's see what's been stacked, 15 million. So that's f almost 40 bits. Yeah, we got some chips oh. to play he's with now. He's got chips to play This will be a small raise, I'm sure, from Ben here in the button with two fours. Raises to 1.5 million. Daniel calls. We will flicks in a call. quick call. Heads up to the flop. Ace eight offsuit. I don't mind the defend there at all. No, not at all. Queen of spades, six of clubs, nine of spades. You know, at this point, three handed, you just have to be playing some pots. You, we, you can't just be folding. So Leo's checking, and he does indeed have the back door, not flush draw, which is, I think, the information he was probably interested in by looking at his cards. Leo checks. How do you feel about looking back at your cards again? Do you do that? Do, would you do that in this situation? I try to remember what I have the first time. I always look twice before the flop comes, but um, if you don't know, it's always better to look. No <laughs> it's better to look than better, think better you have to, a better to not. find out. Yeah, for yeah. sure. If you if you looked a few times, uh, you know, in the last few hours, you've looked after the flop or something like that. You're gonna have to balance it and look even when you know. Yeah. Um, I try not to look. I hate. Yeah, me too. I look back at my hand. Like it feels so wrong. <laughs> To have a spade come out and then be like, do I have a spade? And you have to look again. So despite having the spade, Leo just falls here, which is certainly reasonable, but limit players would take off a card on that flop. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, you know, again, the, the problem is is that there's so many hands on that texture that, uh, that Ben can barrel. Like if Ben has king yeah. jack, king 10, jack 10, 10, 8. Eight seven ten seven like there's so many gutters seven five like there's just an infinite amount of straight draws and gutters and flush draws and he's just gonna like calling with a hand like ace is just really 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 weak. Um, yeah, you're gonna, gonna end up folding a lot. a lot of turns, but yeah. there are a lot of turns that you don't have to fold. I mean, any spade ace or eight is uh, certainly playable in some capacity. For sure. And you don't know if the, you don't know that he's gonna barrel the turn. So those things combined might have talked. Yeah, I might talk myself into feeling. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate calling. I actually calls. think that that's a good uh, flop to check raise bluff when there's check uh, raising is also an option. Either, yeah. You take a lot of those gutters out of the question. You make a lot of those gutters just fold. Do the sure only hard. issue with that is you're not representing a ton Four of value unless you would do it with top pair and just to I get you a can two pair combos. Yeah, you yeah. value, but not there's not, not, a ton. not a lot. Yeah. yeah. But even if they do Look have at this a flush flop. draw, they don't always want to just straight flush try to draw get here. For Good flop for Leo, but yeah. Dan's not. This is a bad flop for Dan's hand. It hits Leo's range pretty hard. I think Dan's going to probably Dan does just check it back, up. which is I think we all like that play by the flop. And Leo looks uh, way more interested in this pot than most of them. <laughs> wow, he's checking again. That's with really surprising. Flush draw. That's really surprising. You know, you don't want Dan just getting the showdown here. I don't think Dan's still going to bet. I don't. No, I think I, I think would just check yeah. if I was him. Oh. Daniel uh, checks. I think Dan's he's trying, trying to make the showdown, and he, twice, might, and he right? might succeed. Yeah, I would think Leo is trying to check raise. Well, well now, Leo gets there a card. Anyway. Now Dan has some value now too. Is he going to check a third time? Right, trying for a check raise, or is he going to? Is he finally going to bet for value? I hope this he bets. It's going to be fun to see Dan's reaction here. He, he, only bets, he only bets a third of the pot. I would call. I mean, you can't fold. You really can't. 800,000? What are you going to do? I mean, you can't There's fold.
Uh, Cole Tyler? Uh, yeah. Probably not. Okay. Probably not. But there's, there's. He does look could, interested. I mean, we know what he it. has, so it's hard to say. Right, but right. He For, does. I think I mostly call here. He does look excited. Does look like a value bet. So the could, sizing was surprising. Let's see if we try to see Leo look disinterested again. I thought that Leo would go for a ton here. When you make that kind of hand, you just want to win a lot. And I I would expect him to bet like two million, you know, like a ton, which would be easy to fold. But he actually made a very good sized bet, and it's tough for Dan to, lo to fold there. It's <laughs> a <laughs> great reaction from BuzzCon. Yeah. He says, I cannot beat that. He's, he's awesome. I love Dan. <laughs> cannot beat the best possible hand. <laughs> he's got some good uh, animated faces. Right, that his that reactions <laughs> pretty great. <laughs> that was <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> it's mugging for the camera at this point. It's the only way to describe it. That was great. Another good shot of the poker room and the conclusion of million dollar guaranteed. Last hand of this level. If you haven't come here yet, check out the winter skate package. $169 a night. You get a classic room, $100 dining credit, and two tickets to a comedy club. Oh, and complimentary Wi-Fi. Wow. So you can watch our stream in your hotel room. That's pretty nice. Instead of going and using your dining credit or going to the comedy club, just stay in your room and watch us <laughs> for $169. That's pretty nice. It's still a great deal. We're worth every penny. Gags is just as funny as anybody at the comedy show anyway. So. So I had we I'm staying here and we had some kind of poker rate. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's a there's a good rate, and uh, we got tickets to I got my girlfriend tickets to Rob Thomas, which was her favorite. Uh, the guy from that Matchbox 90s band, yeah. yeah. And uh, so you had three nights, and I got tickets like three months ago because I knew it was a big deal to her. And then the night that we had tickets to the show, I uh, final tabled an event here and ended up getting second. You so idiot. Yeah. <laughs> well, 27,000 was, was okay to miss Rob Thomas, sure, but yeah, yeah, I messed it up. So <laughs> she sat in the stands and watched instead. Now that last hand was kind of interesting. Ben limped on the small blind and Dan did my play of raising from the big blind with 9-5 offsuit and took it down. All so right. that was the first time I've seen Dan really open up at all at, at this final table size. So that was nice to see. Uh, and it looks like we're going on some kind Yeah, of we're going to take here. a 15-minute break. Okay. Is it 15 again? With I'm ready for more, man. Three Come players on. left. No, it's just getting yeah, exciting. Yeah, we just want to keep is this going. The, huh? is the, are those the blinds after we come back? Or are those blinds are going to be 600,000 when they come back. So, is, are so those that's the, not right. No, that's so Dan will come back right? to 20 blinds. and Correct. Ben okay. and team will come back to a little over 30, 33. We'll see you guys in about 15 minutes for the conclusion. Well, maybe conclusion. No. <laughs> we'll get there at some point, but uh, we'll see what happens when these three battle it out. We can we can conspire, come up with some conspiracy theories, some intense ones. We could put on our tinfoil hats and really come up with some fun things as to why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. All joking aside, though, I think that uh, I think both these guys played good, right? I mean, let's try to think of what well, well, Young definitely played really well. Yeah. Uh, David too. I, I thought he played solid. Uh, you know, he caught some hands late that had him incinerate the field. Yes, definitely. Uh, but yeah, it was a it was a good game. Whatever was going on here, who cares? Um, and then, and then, really, from everyone, you know, there was a, there was a few blunders here and there, but some pretty solid play and some fairly entertaining play. Two to say, we saw that one big bluff uh, with the seven five of hearts from uh, our yeah. man here. Yeah, yep. from yeah. That, that was I courageous. Think, uh, I think Ryan's going to be kicking himself so hard because he wanted to call so bad. Like, every cell in his body yeah. wanted to just put chips in the middle and he just didn't. Like, I think that's that's so annoying to, like, have the right instinct and then, like, tell your instincts no. Like, it's I'm going to do the math. I'm going to worry there. about math instead and yeah. about, like, locking up money instead. But that feeling comes from, like, being like, okay, this guy is queen jack or nothing in that spot when it was 8, 9, 10. Like, mm -hmm. that feeling where you're like, he still shoves the river, like, it's really hard to have exactly this one hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or ace nine, ace eight, but the same thing. I just yeah, I think he I think uh Beyond played very well. Yep. Played a good final table. Mm -hmm. Um Congratulations to David. David has won the tournament. Our main event winner is Congrats David. David. Congratulations. Wait, so is it over? Was that the that they yeah. had no chips left? 
I thought, he, I thought he had a few chips left. Nope. No. And this is where I do a, an awkward interview, and then we're done. We're going to watch. <laughs> we're going to watch an interview by you now. Are you going to ask him what was going on? <laughs> no, because no, she didn't she didn't see, see it. it yet. She was out there while yeah. we were watching and seeing oh, the oh, bizarre happenings. Oh, yeah. uh, she's seeing this for the first time. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, that was a crazy last half an hour. Beyond now with Asex under the gun one. Do we do we know how many big blinds Brian was up with? Two, three. Couldn't Can't have been many. Couldn't be more than that. Young opening, the ace, X, just good to see. He, I, I hope Brian million. looked. Max yeah, same. In. But it looks like he's all in for about a million. Uh, yeah. Wow, yeah. He's just, he has uh, ants, red and black. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying for you, James. Thank you. I th I'm good. I, I think Dip there will see the way at some point. I still don't remember why they're called ants. Because they look like ants. Are you serious? <laughs> they do look <laughs> like ants. Do they? Yes. They look like eights to me. <laughs> yeah. It looks well, a little bit more like eights than ants. Yeah. You're not very creative. Oh, uh, okay. Snowmen. I, yeah, they look like snow. They look like I um, what did the infinity symbols. What they did look the zero like say to the eight? Uh, listen. Nice, uh, nice belt. Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> My, my nephew liked that one. He's yeah. six. <laughs> what do you call ants? Ashantis? No, no, they're queens. Yeah, that's it's our chinies. Chinies. Uh, we gotta, we gotta do no, something with just that. No. no offense to that, that reg. <laughs> All right, he's a stars Poker reg, chini, yeah. poker chini. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to change that up a little bit, I think. Yeah, can if you put poker in your poker name, then you don't get to name yeah. hands. I think you got something. Wow. Oh. Yikers. So, to the Ocho. Our, our boy Ryan is going to need an eight, and he did G not get it, and he's out. Wow. Yeah. Besides the 9 4 shove, he played pretty well the rest of the day. Yep. Yeah. Unlucky, Brian. Good game. That was one of those spaz outs we talked about, like tight guy, tight guy, tight guy. But it, it was almost like, well, I made my pay jumps, and now, like, no he one's short anymore. Let's yeah. get it in. Looks like he had lunch waiting for him on the side. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. lunch at $96,000, I think he'll be all right. All right, so we're good. all guaranteed with one rating, four left. Just one, yeah, about 120, 119. $120,000. It's a lot of thousands. Yeah. I definitely think that people could be talking right. chop now, for sure. Um, and again, I still think Ryan would probably not be into it, but who knows? He just doubled up. He's probably feeling it now. He also just doubled his total caches in life. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. I would always look. I, I like looking personally. I'm not he didn't look. Off. He, yeah, he asked for. You have he some asked hands you could fold. Look. Plenty of hands you could fold. I, I think that is a common thing that I see a lot um, from amateurs and regs alike. Actually, they're just like, oh, getting it in here. Two bigs, three bigs, and they're really no. like. A random hand is a lot better than certain hands you're going to look at, and you yeah. get you're in big blind the next hand with the random one. David, what's David going to do with the queen jack? I all before the other thing throws. announcing that you haven't looked all the players to play correctly against a random range, and you don't want to do that either. You can at least pretend to look if you fold, fold. It's like they're just playing a, a non-raised pot with overlay. Yeah. Young uh, in the small with king seven of diamonds. I'm pretty sure I would just rip it here. Yes. I would also. And our big blind will make the call. We are three way. Yeah, I would definitely. I would definitely. What's just uh? What's? Th is there any merit to having a go call call and then checking down? Mm, as a chip leader, I would be away. You know, if, if I was someone else and I thought I could get it through. Mm -hmm. Uh. And Jung has. A pair of kings with flush draw. So so Kenny's gonna need to come up with uh, some sort of two pair or an ace. We will show down. Oh. Nice, this is a, this is a good sweat. What is that? One diamond. like a 10. Ah, uh, good game, Kenny. What was it, like 10 eight or something? Yeah. He would have shoved that anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good game, Kenny. Kenny, the fan favorite. At least for me. <laughs> I liked him. Yeah. Yeah, he was a good guy. 73,000 for his troubles. Uh, nice, nice job, Kenny. That's a lot of buy-ins to future event ones at yeah, the Borgata. Yeah, he's got about 148, I think. Yeah, he seems I like thought. a guy who likes a lot of hands. <laughs> oh, is that Ken? Oh, yeah. Kenny. Kenny, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he opened ace five in the hijack. Mm -hmm. yeah. 11 bigs. I wouldn't hate Ryan opening anything here at all.
And a re-raise. David goes all in. That's got to be a very real hand. Our our uh, card reader's Robert off. But just with the uh, speed that he reshipped, it looks like a big hand Bose. to me. Do we have raise Mike. all in, all in? Yeah. Mike calls I wouldn't be surprised in. if David had kings or something. David throws pocket eights. Eight is spades, eight of clubs. Or eights. Mike. Eights is a big hand. <laughs> ants? Who's pocket David? ants? Who's, who's David? <laughs> David? David is the man. V David. David Hom, the power yeah, plant operator. Why don't we see it? We just smashed. Wow. Is it red ant on the flop? Red ant. Red yeah, I'm kind of surprised that he got it in as quickly as he did with eights, you know? It looked way yes. stronger, right? Yeah. He was, like, pumped about it. We didn't even get to see, uh... Definitely looked like Jack's plus. Yeah. Just we didn't without get to seeing whole cards. We didn't get to see, uh... Well, I mean, he I, was I guess getting into it with a save, like, all right, I'm going to match this table and, like, play a whole bunch of hands, and he just has run into it a lot of the time. Yeah. How does Elver fold 10 10 there? We're getting a question from John Sherrod. He has to know he's ahead. Maybe he just doesn't want to flip for it. Yeah. And I, I think it's actually less absurd than people think um, with the ICM. And especially, like, this isn't just ICM. Like, this is this might be this guy's shot at w uh, one of his only shots at winning a, a large amount of money in poker, you know? So, like, whatever. Like, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna fault it. Um, and based on ICM, it's I literally don't think it's it's outrageously bad. Um, I'm pretty sure it's definitely a get in. But like, you know, you, this if this spot's only gonna happen once in your life, I mean. And you want to pay jump a couple times? Yeah. There, that is a real thing. Like, look, if you are someone who plays like sixty dollar dailies and stuff, and then. Dollars richer right now as we are three players remaining on our final table of our one million dollar guarantee. Our button is with Benjamin, making Daniel our small blind and Leo Hey guys, welcome back. The Borgata Million final table, three hands in with Dan Buzgod and Ben what was his last name? Beam. Beeman? Ben Beam. Ben Beeman. Beam, just Beam. Oh, it's just Beam. Mm. Yep. Huh. We think that's how it's pronounced. B E A H M. Okay. Fair enough. Ben Beam. And Leo Goldberg. Wow. Leo I Goldberger from this is, this is I'm like dropping the ball here. It's been a long day. We're three-handed. Uh, big one is 600000 and they are playing for $194,000. If I'm tired, how tired do you think these guys are, Matt? Very, very tired. And, I mean, 300000 600000 blinds. The starting sack of the tournament was 20000 So That's you, crazy. You had to out. have 30 times your starting sack just to post a big blind right now. That's absolutely insane. Did you ever have more than 600000 in this tournament? Capped, I maxed out at 300000 So you would I maxed not have I maxed blind. out at a small blind here. Yeah. I, I, at one point, would have been blind. Really? Nice. Yes. I think I would have been able to post a big blind to the next level also. Ooh, so you got but it would have been close. 800. That's, That's a pretty I, good run. Yeah, right about there. And that was. Did that you have an interesting bust out story or just normal poker? Um, score? I I got queens in verse sixes for a whole bunch of lost. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, what can you do? So here's a reset here. Leo, 42 blinds is our chip leader. Ben Beam with 20 million here. Just Looks over quite startled lines. to take that picture. Yes. <laughs> Dan Buzgon looks like he ate a. Cherry Lollipop took that picture. Remains a short stack, but not quite as short as he was. He's before. definitely not out of it, though. You no, know, not he's a, not at all. Out of any of these guys to have a short stack, he's the he's my pick to grind it for the longest and and make the most make the most out of his short stack. You know, shove it around and pick the spots correctly enough uh, to to get actually gain chips in the process. Yeah, I mean, this is his style too: is to kind of stick around and then make plays at the right time. You saw him. Raise the big blind with 9-5 offsuit, the very last hand before break. That's just kind of a subtle play that gets him a few more chips.